you guys trying out the Arcbird antenna tracker. It really looks nice. Mechanics are awesome. It spins quite confidently in all directions. It can spin endlessly because it has uh, these sliding contacts. The status LEDs, which are GPS operation should flash rapidly, it does. The yellow one is video quality. The video link, it flashes also, and the green one is audio. And the green LED is like really hard to see. I did check the audio channels work, and they work. You could either uh, buy a GPS module for the tracker itself and plug it in, then the tracker always knows where he is, even if you move it, which is a cool option. But if you have no GPS on this thing here, then you have to wait for a GPS signal on the plane to be perfect. Place the plane nearby this, hold this button for 5 seconds, the red LED button, and it stores its home position from the video feed, or from the audio feed of the plane. I mean, you can do calibration, but it's an automatic process. I will show you. You press the yellow LED button for 5 seconds. Then it turns 35 degrees and it spins for three whole circles, which is where you see the. Yeah. Then, if it's finished, it looks north, which is about north from what I know here. Then, I'm not sure if you have to do this. If you press it once, it will look east and go 30 degrees up. If you press it one more time, it will look south and tilt even more up. A third time, heading west, even more up. Calibration is finished now. And if you press the green button, not sure, yeah. You can tell it's in tracking mode because if you move the whole platform like this, it will always want to look into a certain degree. And it does this now. If you press the green LED button again, you have disabled tracking mode and you can turn it wherever you want. What I found nice about this thing here is you use one battery, of course you wouldn't use a small one like this. A 3 cell, 12 volt battery and plug it in down on the base on this part which doesn't turn of course. And then you have one you have one video out port that would go into your goggles or monitor. This is connected through the, through the turning point of this tracker with endless sliding contacts, so this is nice. 12 volts power here, fit the tracker and the receiver here. So the whole mechanic setup is really nice. We're now turned on but have a slow red blinking that tells us uh, we have no GPS, no video, no audio at the moment because on the other side here I have the plane. This is the airborne module. The airborne module gets GPS from here. Normally you would feed the GPS signal into the Arcbird and have only the white cable split and feed it here. But I saved this, this part for the moment. Uh, so this thing needs GPS. And this is the video out. It's uh, ground, uh, 12 volt, it's video and audio signal. This goes, goes into your video transmitter here. And it's important to have the correct uh, audio channel, right or left. You have to just test it as long as this green LED starts flashing. You have found the right channel or the left channel. <laughs> so let me plug this in here. And now immediately the tracker changed. You see fast red blinking says GPS. You see the yellow blinking which says I got video feed. And you should also see green blinking. Yeah. 
So the green LED is not bright enough for daylight use. That's something that's a bit weird, but it's okay. So we have video feed, fast blinking, red fast blinking, and the green LED blinking really fast, so everything should work. My testing here with the plane didn't work because I didn't walk far enough from the tracker. It only starts working well after, let's say, 30 to 50 meters. I mounted it on my black snapper and had a quadcopter to test it. So that's one of the cool things about this tracker. You just have this small little airborne module and the GPS and you just have to mount this on your plane or copter and can use the tracker. So the tracker is not limited to specific OSDs. Going into the video transmitter. So that's the trusty black snapper. It's my test platform, it's large enough. I fly with a 4 cell 5200 milliamp multi star. How to mount the M20 on a quadcopter? Well, that's the ideal way, if you ask me. It looks kind of funny. Edit, yeah, it, it holds well. And I once again used this quantum ground station box here, but it's basically a voltage regulator with a bay for a battery here for me. And I mount the ArcBird antenna tracker on top of this with the tripod screw. Yeah, and if you really have this as a permanent installation, you might want to do a soldering job to get a really nice cable situation. This is really a temporary installation here with a few cable ties. I now only use a single receiver with a kind of narrow fetch arc patch here. And let's start the copter over there. And I'll move it a bit further away. Yeah. I would say it has a, a lock now. Going away a bit. Antenna slightly off to the left, but it's okay. Now I will strap right with the quad quite fast. And the tower should turn, yeah, it, it keeps up quite nice. And no, oh, direction is so fine. Now, if I ascend, it should also tilt. And yeah, the angle is okay. I would say it's okay. Get a nice turn. Yeah. Works quite nice. So I try once again to fly over my head. The last time I tried this, the receiver was unplugged because the battery cable connection is loose. Yeah, and here is the M20 for the onboard perspective of the tracker. I'm just doing some more rounds to see how long it works.
also have to say I have a really bad video uh, transmitter on the quad so the video signal sure isn't the best but so far the tracker works nice Uh, he had some issue while I was quite near to myself, but yeah, if 50 or 100 meters away, it's all fine. <coughs> okay, so it worked nice. Thanks for watching. Bye.